welcome once again, fans of flip clocks. Today I want to introduce you to my new favorite flip clock. This is the Caslon Model 201. It is a clock that was uh, produced by Copal Japan, and it came out first in 1966. Now that's actually the year that the Cipher 3 was uh, released. Uh, Cipher 3, of course, uh, being one of the more famous clocks. But this clock, I would like to argue, uh, may have been the clock that got things started in the United States. Here it is in 1969 for $25, which is about $170 in today's dollars. And later in 1970, uh, $17 is about $108 in our dollars today. So these were not cheap clocks. Even in 1973, when the clock was uh, last seen in advertising, uh, it was about $62 uh, in today's dollars. So... Here's the Copal 20, uh, excuse me, the Castellan 201 made by Copal. It's uh, coral red, according to the advertisements. Let's get a listen at the flip. Now it's a very smooth flipper, surprisingly so, and it's very quiet when uh, when it runs. And for size comparison, this is the Cifra 3 or Cifra 3, as they call it in Italy. The 201, just a very, very elegant, nice-looking clock. And this one's in great shape. I got it from Etsy. I'll give you a link to the uh, to the seller at the bottom in the uh, description. So the clock was uh, imported by Ropat Company, Culver City, California, made in Japan. Now, usually when we're taking these clocks down, we'll get a hold of the knobs and just pull straight out. Uh, you can try that, but I advise you not. Uh, I'm going to show you why. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and do a little disassembly here. Now, highly recommend you get a soft surface because to get to this clock, we're going to have to put the face down. This uh, clock happens to have an almost perfect face. I was very happy when I saw that. You're going to need some smaller screwdrivers, uh, two sizes. The back ones are a little uh, smaller. Now, to get this back off, you're going to have to attack it in a way a little differently. You, that looks like something you would grab on and pull up, but uh, I'd caution you against that because underneath these uh, holes here, you're going to have little tabs. Now, you can't use a butter knife here. You want a thin blade. You want to be very careful, of course. Take your time. You can see the tab there, and we'll pry this one up here, and then you can use this tab here to remove the back lid and then pull towards you because there's t there's uh, tabs on the top as well. That's how you get the back off safely. Now here's why you don't just yank that knob off. There's a screw there. Of course, with other clocks, you know we just grab and pull. You can't do that with this one. You need a flathead screwdriver. Now, even the screw itself, the first time I took this down, was very tight. Um, and then to pull, when you uh, pull the knob off, it did not want to come off at first. Uh, there's some uh, stick tight or something in there. I had to use the screwdriver to kind of pry it away from that plastic wheel there, the metal banded part there. But after, uh, after that, it comes off really easily. You'll see uh, there's a flat part of the post there where that screw goes in and locks it down. You'll see that if you get down to this. So there's that. Okay, now uh, we can uh, turn attention to the screws that hold the clock mechanism in itself. And these screws have um, washers as well. And you're going to notice here that the screws actually hold in place right there. The plastic... Uh, it's a plastic piece with a metal insert that holds the screws to the back of the clock. So it's sort of uh, between the clock and the base of the clock there. You're seeing them falling down in there now. So you'll have to reassemble that way and get them back in. Now, um, you do not need to take this cord off to clean. You're not going to have to desolder anything. There's plenty of room. You thread that through and you can wash out this case. I want to show you something here. If you look, there are six tabs 
and those are metal tabs that someone has done a quarter turn on. So I decided not to undo that. Um, I didn't want to mess this up. So when I cleaned the clock, I washed it with soap and water and rinsed with distilled water. And those tabs for sure hold in this bezel, uh, this uh, chromed bezel that holds that uh, plastic face in. Now if you look there, there's a symbol. And that is a Japanese symbol. It's the symbol SA. And interestingly, uh, that could mean serviced because a lot of times they use this uh, type of symbol. It's called katakana to mimic U.S. words. So SA best. Now I'm not kidding. I'm serious. Now there's the... Uh, the thing that holds the uh, screw and it goes in here. They are the same type. In other words, there's, they uh, they look exactly the same and they catch the base of the clock just on different sides. Sobist. Seriously. But if, if someone else knows what that symbol means, please let us know. And I'm not kidding. That's how they, uh, what they use katakana for symbols now. There is the neon bulb that is blackened. It still glows. It's probably got five years left on it. But uh, you see, that's a... That's a fiberglass uh, that's impregnated with varnish, and it will crack when I if I take that apart. I just don't want to mess with it right now. I'm still enjoying the newness of my clock. It does use the Copal, the Copal II mechanism, and a metal uh, gearbox. Lots of brass. Built to last. And that's it. And here we have... Some more beautiful pictures. This was from the Etsy seller. Well, thanks for checking this out. And tell us what you think in the comments below. When you get the time, come visit us at flipclockfans.com.